what was the first cool thing you bought when you made money in music? Was it a car or a motorcycle? You know what the first thing I bought when what? I made money? What? A piano. A piano? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. A grand piano. And I slept under it. Oh, is that right? I yeah, slept yeah. under the piano. Have you still got that one? Yes. Yeah. And what was the first vehicle you bought? The first vehicle I bought was an Audi Fox. Oh, an Audi Fox. A sensible car. Wow, wow. This is totally out of character. I thought it was like a foreign car. You right. Know? It was, I thought it was a sexy little car, and it, it was easy to drive. So it seems like you started out as an old man and have gotten younger. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Automotively. So what first got you interested in cars and motorcycles? Motorcycles I always liked since I was a kid. Motorcycles and rock and roll were the same thing. Loud, noisy. Yeah. Uh, cars recently, but motorcycles always. So were you one of those kids that just, was it the DMV when you're 15 and, and nine tenths waiting to get your license? I didn't have a, a motorcycle license till I was in my 30s. Really? Yeah. I just drove without a, a motorcycle license. Oh, you just, but you had motorcycles, yeah. I had motorcycles. But on and off, and then I got serious about it in my late 20s. I always missed the bikes I sold or gave away. And I said, I want that back, I want that back. That's when I started collecting. This is a beautiful area. Yes, this is Bayville. My mom used to take us here when we were kids. We'd jump off the bridge, and you go fishing, and we'd borrow boats. Yeah. Borrow boat. Just take them off the mooring, go for a rug, come back. Yeah, I think the real key to success is never forgetting where you came from. I think that keeps it being fun because I'm still startled and overwhelmed by what I'm doing. Stadiums. I'm a piano player. What the hell am I doing in a baseball stadium? Right. But yeah, they're coming. Forty thousand people. Yay! <laughs> okay. All right. Now Oyster Bay may be only eight miles from where Billy grew up. So this is my property. Oh, this is a beautiful piece of property. Yeah. But man, it's a world apart. I used to work on an oyster boat out here. Oh, is that right? And yeah. look up at this house and I'd curse at the people, rich bastards. <laughs> yeah. Never worked a day in your life. And now I own the place. Yeah. Which I really enjoy because I don't really belong here. <laughs> but that's what makes it fun. I'm waiting wow. for the owner to come back and throw me out. <laughs> I mean, I like the look. Everybody always pulls up. Men will pull up, like especially guys, and they'll, they'll be like, "Oh my god, cool car!" See, Does men that pull have up a... next to a blonde and say things. That's unusual. Yeah. How would no, you but it's about always it? about the car. It's really? never yeah. about me. Really? Yes. And they'll say something, and I'm like, "I only know the engine. That's all I know." Right, I was right. like, "It was just and a you cute know the car. engine. What engine is this? Coyote 5.0." Oh, that's very good. Yeah. That's very good. What was your first car? Uh, my first car I ever bought myself on credit. Um, was, you bought it on credit? Was, well, I didn't have anybody to co-sign. I didn't have anybody. So I was one of those kids that, you know, very stupidly was like, look what you can do with this thing. Um, but anyway, I bought a Ford Explorer Sport. Oh, OK. That was my first. Same kind of thing as a Bronco. Yeah, I like, a, I like an SUV, but I like the little cute ones. I have something I'm going to take you for. I'm going to let you drive it. OK. Have you, have you done much off-roading? I have off-roaded quite a bit in my teen years and 20s, yeah. but not really. I think once you become a mom, you become not cool, Jay. Um, and you just don't have time for things. Well, you know, I guess I, maybe there's something to that. So today, Wait, what are we going to be driving? What you'll see. You'll okay. see. You ready? Yeah. OK. You trust me? It's not my truck. Uh -huh. Let's go down here. Let's see how this thing really goes off the road. All right. This turn should be really fun, Jay. Very wow, this is pretty steep. I uh, know. I'm the very first thing you're testing my skill. See a tremor in your future. See? I actually really like how this drives new. It does drive nice. So you got your four-wheel drive. So Get it. Here we go. I love four-wheel drive. I got this. Look at that. Look at that, huh? I'm a pro. 
Oh my god, I want to know what that underground tunnel thing was. We'll find out. Let's do this. This is the Shelby Mustang, the GT500. Remember how the Beatles really broke out in England in the 60s? This was our Beatles. And wow. It's just become an American tradition. And I just thought I would get you out of the foreign job, as my dad called it, and put you <laughs> into some, take some put something America. How many horsepower do you think this has? Take a guess. The sounds of that engine is going to be pretty large. 760. Wow. What's that zero to 60? Less than three and a half seconds. Can I go take a look? Of course. Go take a look. Wow. Ooh, look at that love, the interior. Can I Absolutely. sit inside it? Go right ahead. That's beautiful. Wow. Well, see, the cool thing is this car has not been officially released to the public yet. And I wanted to get someone who was not familiar with it to get an unbiased opinion. You will be the first person outside of Ford and their employees and the people who built this car to drive it. What, before you, Jay? Before me. I have okay. not driven it yet. Well, that's an opportunity. So I, I wanted to bring in a <laughs> proper Englishman and see what you think. I'd love to. Well, we've only got two seats, Dave, so I'm sorry. You'll have Goodbye to for now. get back to Detroit somehow. But listen, uh, we'll take good care of it. He'll be fine. You're sure? Dave, okay. I'll see All you right. later. Thanks, thanks, Dave. Yeah, thanks. Ready to give it a shot? Absolutely. All right, let's do it. It's got some power. Oh, yeah. See, power corrupts absolutely. <laughs> but it drives very nicely. It does. It's surprisingly smooth. Put your foot on it. Let's see what it'll do. Really impressive. Yeah. It's got a great sound. It's a proper car. It is a proper car. So what was your very first car? My very first car, and I can, I can answer that question with certainty. Yeah. My very first car, I was 28 at the time, and it was a second-hand Porsche Targa. Oh, very nice. And I loved that thing. Oh, but no beater cars when you were in high school no, or any of no, that No, I, I couldn't even afford a beater right, car. Right. I got my first success at the age of 27. And so the car I was able to buy was a pretty decent car. Yeah. And I guess, you know, that was uh, my first taste of the American dream. Now, what's the most foolish car purchase you've ever made? A Rolls-Royce Wraith. Rolls-Royce Wraith? <laughs> yeah, beautiful car, but right. it was like driving a boat every time I took yeah, it out. Yeah. Massive thing, completely senseless purchase. But you have to do that. That's you got part to of do. being a rock star. Yeah. Exactly. What is it Mark Boland said? I drive a Rolls Royce because it's good for my voice. Well, even though we call this the all-American car, the Mustang, the original 350 was designed by a Korean gentleman. John Chun was his name. He escaped from North Korea, went to South Korea, came to America, went to Art Center College to be a designer. And this is one of the fruits of his labor, or a descendant of it, you could say. The American dream. You finally drive an American car. You eat hamburgers, don't you? Yeah, I eat hamburgers. I eat hamburgers. Let's do it. All right. I think we'll make an American eat it. Yeah. <laughs> This is my first time on a racetrack. Well, see, first time for everything. <laughs> well, I know it's your day off. I know you're right in the middle of the tour. So how's the tour oh, going? Good? The tour is going great. It's been five years since I've been on tour. Now, Head Above Water is a new album. Tell me about the title. Why? What, what does that refer to? What's the first single off the record. OK. It was a song that I wrote about my, my health journey. Yeah, that's right. You have that Lyme disease deal. Yeah, so I fought that for a couple of years. Wow. I'm happy to be driving. I'm happy to be on tour and yeah. living life. Well, you started at 15, right? Yeah, my first album came out when I was 17. Complicated and Skater Boy. And what year were you first on The Tonight Show with me? Do you remember? I would have been 17. Right, right. So you want to get your speed up and then brake right before the turn and then power through the turn. Go right into that corner right there. Right there, tight as you can. See, try to get near that white line. Woo, you kind of go yeah. wide, that's it. There you go, doing good. The idea is to always kind of keep the car going straight even when you're going around a curve. Cut the wheel, yep, now get on the gas. There you go, there you go. I feel like I'm in a video game right now. Yeah, well, it is like a video <laughs> game, yeah. yeah. There you go, now you're doing good. Give a little more gas, give a little more gas. So in Canada, you just say, give her, give her, eh? Give her, eh? <laughs> See, now go this way, step on the brake, and then cut the wheel way over there. Oh, this is easy. Well, yeah, that's because we're not going that fast, but... Oh, okay, yeah, we're going imagine 30. Imagine you go 100, and it gets a little crazy. Give her, eh? Don't be afraid of it, Lassie. <laughs> 
There you go. All right, pick it up some speed. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see if she gets it over 100 miles an hour. Are you ready to go? Oh, my gosh. Okay, you're going to put your foot right to the floor, okay? All the way to the floor. Want me to take you around for lap? Absolutely. All right, we'll switch off. It's not every day you get to go on a racetrack with Jay Leno. Or Avril Lavigne. shows you what a good car this is. Wow. How you doing there? You okay? I'm holding down my lunch. <laughs> Purple frame rail was kind of a tribute to taking a piece of Cadzilla, so it's bad little sister of Eliminator, still gonna have some yeah. purple in it, Cadzilla purple. But you do get that sense of machine meets art. Can we take it for a ride? I think we should. Let's do it. Let's Time do to it fire it up. Button this thing. Before we do that, can you throw me the keys so we can recreate it like you did in the video? Yeah. All right, let me get over here. Yeah. OK. OK, sun's kind of in my eye, but go ahead. Let's try it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hear a lawsuit coming. You OK? It's all right. It's all right. It's OK. You good enough to drive? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. You, know, right, nice my road, you take some of the cars, don't you? The Eliminator, uh, we loaned it to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can still go up and see it. Of course, Cadzilla sits at the Peterson Auto Museum. Right. Well, tell me about your relationship between music and cars. Well, I've been asked many times, why does rock and roll and cars? Maybe we should go back to Chuck Berry, 1955, Maybelline. Maybelline, yeah. And then, of course, before that, Rocket 88. Rocket 88. There's Hot Rod Lincoln. Oh, my gosh. There's always been this connection. Yeah. yeah. Nobody really has uh, the definitive answer. I just kind of go with it, knowing yeah. that fast, loud. Let's leave it at that. A sharp-dressed man with a well-made point. I think we've eased down the highway enough in this old whiskey runner. It's time to put these legs to use. Jay, it's been a great one, man. Thanks. It's really cool. crazy as a kid, or was it more music and girls, or was it? No, it was all about music. Did your parents ever think you could make a living during music, or did they try to encourage you to take uh, heating and air conditioning, you know, something? Exactly. Yeah. No, my dad wanted to be in college to have something to fall back on. Something to fall back on. Good song title. Yeah, I know. That was, uh, that yeah. was my parents. Something, something to, fall... to fall back on. So you were pretty successful right from the get-go, huh? A lot as a Messina was. Right, you know, right, we, we right. Hit, we hit quickly because right at the beginning, the whole singer-songwriter thing was new. And right. when I went into the movies, yeah, yeah. I, I lucked into really iconic movies. Caddyshack, still one of the most rented movies right, of right, all time. Right, yeah, great movie. Then Footloose, then uh, uh, Top Gun. Let me ask you, when you get the call to do the music, yeah. does the director or the writer or the producer tell you what he wants, or do you watch it and tell them what you want? I watch it and, and put the pick the, where I want the song. When I did Top Gun, the screening was full of acts that were popular at the time. Right. And so uh, my partner and I decided we would write for the volleyball scene, because I figured nobody's going to write for that scene. Right. Because I had learned that you just want in on the soundtrack. 
Right. And then maybe you'll get a hit single, maybe you won't, but right. you'll be a part of something that's going to be big. Yeah, yeah. And so we wrote a song called Playing With The Boys. I had no idea that that scene would become this big, iconic yeah. moment in the movie. But it probably wouldn't have if that song hadn't been in there. Fair uh, to say? Or, oh, I would have. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that. Hey, we should recreate one of those classic scenes from Top Gun. We got the car. OK, what, 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 do you, what do you got in mind? No, I got it. Yeah, this is Maverick. Permission to buzz the tower? Negative, Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. Do it anyway. Go! Yeah, woo! All right. All right. All right. I want some fun! Side of Detroit with Motown legend Martha Reeves in a car I picked out just for her. So when was the last time you rode in a 65 Mustang? Do you a know, while? I have never ridden in a Mustang. Wait, you've never ridden in a Mustang? No, this is my first time. My first Mustang ride. Tell me about the early days. You grew up here. Did you knock on Barry Gordy's door? Did he discover you? Well, you know, we used to have amateur shows all the time in the different theaters, and I won an amateur contest. Oh, OK. Yeah. And the hits followed. But while Martha's career was flourishing, jobs were moving out to the suburbs and social unrest was growing. Now, I remember a story. Were you on stage once when the riots broke out? Did that, have I got that right? Right at this wonderful theater right here, the Fox Theater. Right. I was getting ready to sing, and somebody beckoned me to the edge of the stage. And I thought something was wrong with my dress, or I'd put on the wrong shoes or something. But I could hear sirens. And they said, uh, Martha, you got to tell everybody to walk out of here calmly. There's a riot that's broken out. We got a curfew. Everybody has to be home by 9. And the armed guards are in the street. In July of 1967, economic pressures, the summer heat, and long-running tensions between African-American residents and the police erupted in five days of violent riots. I imagine you've seen the city change quite a bit since you were making the hits here, huh? Oh, yeah. Because of the riots, a lot of things changed. People moved and people went out of business, yes, and decided they'd take their business to the suburbs. Give you some perspective just how massive the exodus from Detroit was. Between 1950 and 2010, the city lost about 1.1 million residents. That's more people than are in San Jose, California, the ninth largest city in the US. They left behind tens of thousands of abandoned buildings, and the effects were devastating. So what made you stay after so many folks left? Our job was to be an example. You get over a crisis and you continue your life. Yeah. You can't run from reality. But there were those, like Martha, who stuck it out and helped turn things around. This Heidelberg over here? Yes. We're entering Heidelberg. Wow. <laughs> that is so clever. There's Tyree. We're going to be on the Heidelberg yeah, come on. show. Uh, <laughs> All right. Jay, have you ever been on television? Uh, this is the first for me. <laughs> yeah. Martha, you ever been on television? No, Heidelberg Television, no. This is yeah. the first. You know, this is really a big screen. This is, uh, <laughs> this high def stuff is unbelievable. <laughs> it likes the hands coming right at you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come right at you. Let me turn the set off. Yeah, turn it off. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.